Hello! In this video, we will begin learning about the skinning process in a kitsu. The first step to binding a mesh to your skeleton is called the dual skin process. Everything you will need for binding a mesh and to fix the skin is in the atelier menu here. You can skin more than bipeds by using this menu. Before we bind, we want to make sure a few things are in order. First, make sure that your mesh and joints are all in the same character group, like so. Next, you want to make sure that you are in skin and check in your character bank. The third thing you want to make sure of is that you have no transformation values on your meshes. If you brought in your mesh FBX and you decided that you wanted to change its transformation, rotation, or scale, you could do that and then you can select your meshes and press on this button here called the reset and freeze button in your transformation menu. That should freeze all of your transformations. This command only works on meshes. Now for binding our mesh, our mesh binding process is called the dual skin process. And it's called the dual skin process because there are two steps. The first step is to create a pre-bind or a rigid bind by pressing the first button here and it is called the rigid or start bind because it hasn't actually bound your mesh to your skeleton yet it is like creating a blueprint for binding your skeleton and your mesh together the second step is called the auto bind or smart smoothing and this is done through the second button here this is where we actually bind our skin to our skeleton and it uses the first rigid bind as a blueprint. After that, you can go ahead and use this third button to go back and forth and keep tweaking your rigid bind and keep smoothing out that bind. Now let's create our rigid bind by selecting all of the joints and meshes we want bound together. Then we can press this first button here. You can see that a few things have changed in my scene. I now have the second button available for me to smooth out my skin. And I have bind pose instead of build pose in my character bank. I also have this small icon here, which means this bind pose is my reference pose. We will talk about reference pose in a separate video. You can see here that my meshes have also changed icons to signify that we are in our rigid bind. We now also have a light rig, which means that I can start checking my skin. And any vertices that are colored yellow mean that they have the max influence from that selected joint. Because we have half our skeleton, I will also only work on half of my character when I am skinning. Once we are done skinning the half of our character and are happy, we can go ahead and mirror our skeleton and our skin over to the other side of the character. Here in our picker, we have these icons, which are the smoothing factors. Here with these three lines signify a high smoothing. If I click on this icon, you can see that the smoothing for that selected joint has changed to low smoothing. And if I click on it again, I now have off or no smoothing. If I go into my skin atelier preferences, you can see here that I have max influence per vertex. This means that any selected vertex will only have influence from two joints can be changed here. I also have low smoothing strength recommended for the face. So this strength here will be the strength when the icon is a low smooth and the high smooth strength which is recommended for the body and is 30 right now is the strength that will be used when the icon is the high icon. 
Now I can go ahead and select all of my joints again. And I can press on this button here. Now you can see that I have smoothed out my rigid bind and also my mesh has changed icon which means that the mesh is actually now bound to our skeleton. Now we can go ahead and start checking our skinning and we can start messing with our smoothing factors here in our picker and in our preferences. Again, you might want to change these preferences and smoothing depending on your character. If the character's geometry is more dense or less dense, then you will have to play around with that and figure out what works best for your character. Now in order to start fixing up our smoothing, again, change anything here or you can press this third button here to go back to our rigid mode and start working on our rigid mode. I can add influence to whatever joint I have selected. And while I am working on my skinning, I can hold down the V key to navigate my scene. Now I can go ahead and select all of my joints again or you can select if you have only made changes to one joint, a small part of your rigid bind or the smoothing here in one joint then you can select only the joints that you have made changes to. Press the second button again. If you have made no changes to your rigid bind, your smoothing here in your picker, or your settings for your smoothing, then pressing the smooth button again will actually not make any changes to your smoothed skin. Now if we check our arm again, you can see that the smoothing has been updated. You can continue working this way until you are happy with the way that your character has been smoothed out. And you want to keep working on your rigid and smooth skin before you do manual smoothing because if you do manual smoothing and decide that you want to change anything through these buttons again then your manual smoothing will essentially be lost when you re-smooth. In order to unbind a skin, all you have to do is select the meshes that you want to unbind and press on this fourth button here. Now you can see that I am selecting either only the joint or the mesh. Another way to unbind a skin is to simply grab these meshes and pull them out of your character folder. Now you can see that they are unbound. Once we like our smooth skin, we can go ahead and start cleaning up the details manually and we will show the manual skinning in a separate video tutorial.